Hi, my name is Gabe Cook. I'm the director of Debate Kansas City, and I'm going to be doing a video blog today on the Mars Affirmative Case. This case uh, is to be used in the Debate Kansas City League for high school novices along with middle school students. And if you go to the DKC blog under resources, you'll find a place to tap in a password that Debate Kansas City has hopefully given you, and you can access the Mars Affirmative file. What I'm going to do here today is, first, I'm just going to kind of give you an overview of the Mars Affirmative, and I'm going to go through it point by point. So if you have the affirmative file out, go to page three. That's where, I'll, that's where I will start with the first affirmative constructive. And then I'm going to offer you five tips for how you can prepare and execute the Mars Affirmative effectively this season. So let's talk about the first affirmative constructive. It begins with a co uh, quote rather, from President John F. Kennedy about going to the moon. And if you haven't done much uh, history work on this year's topic, if you haven't looked at the United States mission to the moon, commonly called the Apollo program, uh, you probably ought to brush up on your history. And you ought to look at the quote in the context that it comes from. It was when we were competing with the Soviets in our space program and John F. Kennedy really wanted to push Americans to pump budget money and effort and commitment into our space flight program. So looking at those history and looking uh, at the words that once inspired a nation is kind of a useful starting point, especially when you're on the affirmative side of this topic. Uh, so after we get done with the quote from Kennedy, the case goes into its first contention, which is the problem and its cause. The problem is that the space program is slowly dying. The cause of the problem is that the program lacks a mission. And what the evidence talks about is how without some sort of mission that NASA over the next two decades is just going to waste money. And once NASA wastes money for a couple of decades, the program is simply going to be cut. So this author is predicting that our space program is facing a slow death. And the author also says the reason it's facing this slow death is that there's no mission. You may know that our shuttle program was uh, cut, that there is currently no human space flight planned within the NASA administration, and that even though Obama and others talk about Mars and different missions here and there, they have not actually committed to any particular mission, and they certainly have not committed to human spaceflight. So the case begins by arguing that our space program is basically going away because we lack a clear mission. Now, the second contention of the case is the solution. And it argues that if we go to Mars, we will revive the space program and provide a number of benefits for humanity. The evidence talks about how we have a lot of the technology that we already need, and NASA is projected to spend over the next 10 years well in advance of $100 billion. And this evidence says that that should be plenty of money to cover the cost for going to Mars, and that we could do it over the next 10 years. The key, this evidence once again said, or the key rather this that this evidence describes once again similar to the first piece of evidence is that we have to have a commitment that the president the congress need to stand up and say nasa we have to get to mars and that until we do that we're not going to get there so we have a lot of the technology we have a lot of the money the last thing that we need is the commitment once we get that commitment, we will be able to go off and explore Mars, which will answer all kinds of scientific questions. In fact, this evidence calls it the Rosetta Stone um, of science because there's just so much that we could discover in a journey to Mars, not only about Mars, but potentially about ourselves and about uh, other planets and other forms of life and uh, history of our galaxy, just all kinds of stuff that we could learn from going to Mars. So now we know the first two contentions, let's take a look at the third one. The third contention is the advantage, or the biggest benefit to voting for the affirmative. And it's broken down into two parts. The first part is subpoint A. And the evidence basically says that life on Earth is not going to continue forever. And that in fact, humanity faces constant extinction threats. From nuclear wars, to global warming, to an asteroid hitting the Earth, all of these things could cause the destruction of our planet at any time. And subpoint B says the solution is that we need to go to Mars. Once we go to Mars, we'll begin to develop the technology to survive off of Earth. And so even if there was some terrible asteroid that hit, at least we would have the technology to where a piece of humanity could leave, uh, could leave the Earth and potentially colonize and live on other planets. And the evidence says until we do that, we're living in a very dangerous situation. 
where one major catastrophe could end our species. So it just makes sense not to put all your eggs in one basket, i.e. Earth, and to instead kind of spread a, uh, around a little bit so that your species has a greater chance of survival. All right, so that's kind of the basic case for why we should go to Mars, and it certainly covers the outline of the debate Kansas City Affirmative. Now let's go ahead and jump into those five tips that I'm going to offer you on how you can best prepare and advocate the Mars Affirmative. Let's start with the first tip. Have spirit. Look, right now in America and many other parts uh, of the world, there's not a lot of spirit. We have an economy that's not doing well. People are kind of down. And a lot of people, if they heard you say, you know what, now would be a great time to go to Mars, they would say, you got to be kidding me. That seems like such an incredible waste of money. So what you have to do to counter that mood and that general feeling in the country right now is have real spirit and talk about how going to Mars could unite us and how going to Mars could make us answer important questions about ourselves. And it would also lead to a new vision of America where people who can get things done, who can do the extraordinary, who can go to the red planet. So have spirit and try to also tap into that human sense of spirit that John F. Kennedy did back in the 50s and sort of the nationalistic uh, pride that you can also tap into about why America should go to Mars and why we should get there first. And just all the amazing benefits that could, that could happen if we truly commit ourselves to going to Mars and you have to have spirit to make it happen. Now the second thing that you need to do. You need to be science savvy. And this really doesn't require that much explanation. Look, this is a science topic. You're going to have to understand to a degree what it would take to get to Mars, some of the technology required, how some of the breathing and some of the food would work, what would happen to the health of the astronauts. There's a whole lot of science here. So if I were you, I might try to make friends with my science teacher and I would certainly spend some time online familiarizing myself with the science of space. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the third tip. Plan the plan. One thing I didn't mention when I was going through the case was the actual plan. Now, cases have things like contentions, which are where people put their arguments, and then they also have things, or a thing I should say, called the plan. And the plan is the piece of legislation that you're literally asking the judge to vote for. So you're saying, here's my plan, here are these written words, if this was a bill in Congress, this is what you would pass. Now the plan that comes in the debate Kansas City Affirmative is written purposefully vague. It says, and I'm reading from it now, that we will establish a goal of sending a human scientific mission to the celestial body commonly known as Mars. The missions are to begin as soon as it is deemed safe and feasible by NASA. We reserve the right to clarify intent. So what you have to think about is when will a mission be deemed safe? Because as the affirmative, it'll be up to you to explain when that mission is deemed safe. And it will also be up to you to explain when a mission is deemed feasible. For example, the negative might argue that a mission to Mars is going to cost $500 billion to a trillion dollars. And you as the affirmative might say, well, that, that's not exactly feasible. We're not going to quite spend that much money on a mission to Mars. We'll wait till we can get the cost reduced just a little bit. And it gives you some kind of wiggle room. Now, that can be an advantage on the affirmative to be able to wiggle out of arguments. But you also have to think in advance how you want to explain things. How are you going to explain the process of getting to Mars, the timetable that you envision, the costs involved? And here's something else to consider that's not even in the plan, but you'll need to explain. Is this Mars mission going to be a return trip, or is it going to be a one-way trip? Now, a lot of people say that whoever we send to Mars first, they're going to have a pretty low likelihood of being able to make it back partially because the way Mars orbit, uh, orbit rather works and the amount of time that it would take in order to get a second rocket ship to go from Mars back to the United States and, and the process of planning that and the time, all of those things make it such that a return trip, sending astronauts to Mars and then back to Earth, would actually be quite difficult. 
And a lot of people suggest that the first mission to Mars should be a one-way trip. In other words, the people going know that they're not coming back that they're going to Mars to explore and stay and be a first step in the process, most likely, of Mars colonization. So those are some thoughts to consider. You need to plan the plan. What is feasible? What is safe? Is it going to be a one-way or a two-way mission? Think about all those things before your first debate round so that you have a cogent explanation and cross-examination. Now, something that will go right with that is the fourth tip, predict and frontline. What do I mean predict and frontline? Well, you need to predict common negative arguments and then you need to frontline against them. So what are some common negative arguments? Well, there's certainly going to be a lot of questions of feasibility. Uh, there's all kinds of questions of if, if humans can actually make it there safely, how they're going to have food, how they're going to breathe and have water, uh, the different psychological effects that they'll be on any astronaut, uh, any astronaut rather who went on the trip. So, you know, feasibility is going to be a big issue. A second big issue is going to be spending. To go to Mars would be really, really expensive. So you know that you have to have a good explanation for why Mars would make a solid investment for the United States, especially in our current budget climate. So once you predict some of the arguments that you think your opposition is going to make, the questions you think they're going to raise, what you need to do is frontline against those predicted arguments. What does that mean? Well, it's pretty simple. It just means that you write out your three to five best arguments in advance. So you know the other team is going to raise questions about feasibility. So before the tournament, you go through your evidence and you piece it together and you pick your two or three or four favorite pieces of evidence that you think answer any and all questions about feasibility. And that way in a debate round, rather than having to go through your file and seeing where the evidence is, you boom, you know right here, oh yeah, feasibility, I set out my favorite pieces of evidence to respond to that argument, I'm ready to go. So predict what the negative is going to say and then prepare front lines against it or against those arguments, I should say. All right, finally, advantage focus. It sort of relates back to the first tip I gave you, which was to have spirit. But beyond having spirit, you need to have tangible advantages to going to Mars. The first one the case lays out for you, which is the survival of the human species. The argument is that Earth could be destroyed, we need to have our eggs in more than one basket. And that is a tangible benefit, uh, a tangible advantage. But it, it still seems kind of in the future. It's nice to know that maybe if we do the Mars Affirmative, the species can survive. But what advantage can you offer right here, right now? And so you need to focus on all the advantages of the space program, the technologies that it has brought us, the incredible economic benefits that could come along with a robust space program. And there's even an economy add-on advantage that you can find in the Mars Affirmative case. And an add-on advantage is one that you read uh, in the second affirmative constructive. So you've said survival is one advantage. Hey, Judge, we have another advantage we'd like to read you. We're going to benefit the United States economy. Uh, and there's also a United States leadership advantage. And this evidence says that basically if the United States has the best space technology, that that's going to lead to greater economic leadership and greater military leadership. Because let's be honest, as we develop space, there's going to be some issues with the military. And if the United States has the lead and has the supreme technology, then we'll be in a better position to control what happens in space, to keep our satellites safe, and to keep our people safe. So think about the advantages. Saving humanity, that's a pretty good advantage. Benefiting the economy as immediately as you can, that's a good advantage. Protecting our national security, that's another excellent advantage. Be able to tell the judge at the end of the debate round countless reasons why going to Mars will greatly benefit American society and hopefully all of humanity. So that was a run through of the affirmative case and then that was five tips on how you can best prepare and deploy the Mars affirmative throughout the year. Good luck to you and many happy debates.